you're probably wrong about reading. Have you ever thought about how strange reading actually is? Your brain isn't actually built for it. I mean, think about it. Your eyes scan these symbols on the page, turning them into letters and words, and eventually turns them into thoughts, ideas, and even entire world. But here's the surprising thing. Your brain wasn't built to do that. Your brain wasn't built to read. It had to rewire itself to make that happen. I'm Dr. Sujay Nair, a neurology doctor, and I am fascinated by the world of reading, especially when I learned that reading is this magical superpower that our brain has learned to adapt to. It isn't something that you are born with. And this is a video showcasing just how adaptable our brain can be and how we've used reading to reshape our civilization. So let's rewind to human prehistory. Long before writing even existed, our ancestors were focused purely on survival, spotting predators, foraging for food, and communicating with each other through body language and speech. These are the things that our brain evolved to do naturally. But on that timeline, reading is actually a newcomer. In fact, it's a blink in the entire history of humanity. The first writing systems only really appeared about 5,000 years ago. To put things into perspective, our spoken language has been on the timeline for over 50,000 years. But here's the kicker. Evolution works painstakingly slowly, and so 5,000 years wasn't nearly enough for our brains to naturally develop a reading center. Instead, what our brains actually did is that it pieced together and repurposed different parts of the brain in a process called neural recycling. Here's how it works. There's a part of your brain called the visual word form area, the VWFA for short, and it's located on the left occipitotemporal cortex. Now, originally, our brains evolved this area Area in our ancestors to recognize objects like animals or tools. But when humans invented writing, which remember is an invention at the end of the day, this region got reassigned its duties to now also recognize letters and words. Because of mankind's invention of the technology of writing, your brains had to now recycle different parts to do new things. Now the first thing you might be thinking is, well, is that even proven? I mean, is that a theory or is it real? Well, it isn't just a theory. Neuroscientist Stanislas Dehane, I hope I said that right, has done studies using functional MRIs, and in these studies they showed that the VWFA lights up when we read. But here's the interesting part. It also lights up in people who don't know how to read, who were never taught how to read. And that part only lights up when they look at objects or animals. And so this is how they map that conclusion that perhaps this part of the brain has now been recycled to be used for reading. And while we are on that, it's not just the VWFA. Reading involves a whole team of brain regions that are repurposed for a new task. For example, the famous Broca's area for speech expression now helps us to comprehend grammar and syntax. And the part of our brain that now puts all of this together into a meaningful, coherent story is the parietal cortex, which integrates all these different visual inputs and turns it into a coherent language. In other words, reading is a patchwork process. And that's why reading does not come naturally. It has to be taught. Reading is a skill, it's not an instinct. Unlike walking or talking, which most of us naturally learn automatically, reading requires years of excruciating training. I mean, think about how long kids have to spend mapping all these different signals into sounds and then turning those sounds into meaningful words and sentences. And that's where the crux of this story comes in. Because if you don't get that focused kind of training, either due to a lack of access of basic education or conditions such as dyslexia, you probably just won't learn how to read. And now the research is going towards understanding that dyslexia is a perfect example of how difficult it is for your brain to learn to read. Because remember those repurposed circuits that I told you about? Well, studies have shown that in people with dyslexia, they tend to struggle because those parts of the brain at some point in their life just struggled to efficiently recycle themselves in order to interpret letters and sentences. So in a way, dyslexia is a product of our modern day invention of writing and reading. And that's why this movement towards neurodivergence is a much more healthy way at looking at childhood neurodevelopment. Because we can't really be assessing somebody on something that is unnatural to your brain. Because we're all different and develop at different stages, especially when it comes to learning unnatural tasks such 
such as reading. But now here's the more surprising twist. This recycling process comes with trade-offs. Since reading isn't something that's innate, your brain has to work extremely hard to connect all the dots, using so much energy in your brain. And that's why it's one of the most cognitively challenging tasks that humans can do. And why reading in a second language can be not just exhausting, but when done right, can turn you into a superhero. Because that's what this actually is. Reading is a superpower. It's one of the most adaptable, amazing things your brain has learned to do. And because it lights up so many different areas in your brain, it strengthens so many different connections between the left and the right hemispheres of the brain, boosting your abstract thinking and building so much of your cognitive reserve during your adult life, playing a huge role in preventing the onset of neurodegenerative diseases like dementia. And what's more, it's been so transformative and perhaps the single best invention to change things on a societal level. Through reading, we've now learned to store and transmit information across generations. Because just by picking up this book, I'm able to communicate with the author of this book even though we've never met. He could be somebody from centuries ago or somebody from today. And that's why it's one of the greatest inventions. The irony is that this book, by the way, is about the brain. And so my brain is reading about the brain, which was written by somebody else's brain. Anyway, it blows my mind. But here's where things get a little tricky. In the modern world, digital screens have changed the way we read. Studies by Marion Wolf, a cognitive neuroscientist, shows that when we read on screens, we tend to skim over things it rather than deeply process the text, as is the case when you read a book. And this is because our brains have adapted to the faster pace of scrolling and hyperlinks. And this therefore comes at a cost of comprehension and memory. So we have to basically work twice as hard to remember Remember the things that we read on a screen rather than things that we read from a book. It's not as effective as the deep reading experience you get from a piece of paper. So the next time you pick up a book, remember you're doing something that your brain was not born to do. You learned this through an amazing patchwork process as a testament to how brilliantly adaptable your brain really is. It blows my mind every single day when I actually understand just how many things have to go right just to be able to do things that we take for granted such as reading because you've basically repurposed ancient circuits to unlock an ability that has now reshaped entire civilization. It's truly amazing. It's a testament to how adaptable your brain really is, the beauty of neuroplasticity and why you should take great strength to take care of your brain and why I even made this channel because I wanted to go on a journey to help you take care of and build a better brain and definitely reading is one of the most important things you can do for it. One of the best things you can pair with the habit of reading is coffee. And I made an entire video on coffee right here and its effects on the brain. Check it out next. I'll see you there.